All right. Uh, I'm here to, to present um, a, a feature in TypeScript 5.2, which is uh, revolving around explicit resource, resource management using, using, uh, and await using. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I just want to jump right into some code so we have a rough idea of the problem and the proposed solution. Here's a synchronous example where we acquire a file handler and automatically and it automatically gets released when the function is done executing. Um, here's an async, async for example of that version. Um, as you can see uh, with an async, you use the using declaration to acquire a stream, and instead of having to remember to release that stream or close it or whatever, it will automatically happen when you go outside the block that you used using in. Primary sources um, is not just TypeScript. This is also ECMA. Um, there is a TC39 proposal um, that is currently in stage three. Um, the champion is Rob Buckton, and it was last presented in March two, uh, 2023. So it is making its way through into eventually being in uh, the browsers. So you know the the reason why I liked this uh, feature in TypeScript was because it's not just types; it's also runtime component for managing resources. Um, some of the motivation, um, you know, before talking more about the solution that they came up with, I figured we should talk about some of the problems. Uh, there's a bunch of inconsistent patterns for resource management. Um, iterators, streams, file handlers, um, ECMA C++ object handles, these are all different. They, are, they all you know, are doing something similar, which is managing resources, but they're not consistent across the board. Um, there's common foot guns when managing resources, scoping resources, avoiding, avoiding common foot guns when managing multiple resources at the same time, having to write a bunch of boilerplate to manage this properly the right way is difficult, error prone, time consuming, and that's why we're here. So I'm gonna go through just a couple code examples that they uh, showcased in their uh, 5.2 release. Um, if you forget, or if you run the release lock outside of a try finally, you could have an error before you get to the release lock, which would then further cause issues. Um, scoping resources, uh, try finally. It, once you close the handle, you can't use it again. So there's nothing here in the code that would say you can't use handle after it's already been closed. But that is a very real problem that can happen. And then you know when you're man managing multiple resources, they showcase. Uh, if b.close depends on a, oops, b never reached if a.close throws. So if a.close throws, then you can't call b.close and you run into all these issues. Prior art, um, this is used in a, a couple other languages, in particular C Sharp, Java, and Python. Although I will demonstrate later in this talk how this is also being used for Golang's defer, as an example. Um, so as, as a language concept, this exists in other languages. Uh, I'm going to show a Python example, just because I've actually used this one. I haven't used the other ones. Um, the, in Python, there's this with statement that allows you to, for example, open a file. You get the file variable. And then you can do stuff to it. And then when you leave the while block, it automatically does a file.close for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, part of this feature is making it possible for end developers to provide a method on their J JavaScript objects that can automatically be called when we want to remove resources. And the way that they do that is through symbols. So there's a new symbol called symbol.dispose. If you attach that on an object, like for example in the logly, loggy example, if you attach that symbol, that console log statement will, will get called when we are outside uh, when we're done executing that function. Um, so, 
And then there's the async version. So uh, symbol.async dispose does the same thing, but with a async constructs. You can do an async symbol, symbol async symbol dot async dispose. That's a mouthful. Um, that will allow you to await functions inside of that dispose function. Here's I, I just thought it'd be uh, useful to uh, illustrate or like list out some of the other well-known symbols. These are already being used in uh, JavaScript. It just might not be super obvious um, because a lot of it is just built into arrays and objects and things like that automatically. So you don't have to think about them. But sometimes when you're building code, when you're building apps, you might need to reach for some of these symbols to do certain things automatically on your objects. So here's the list. Um, iterators, like the, uh, the really common one that I know about. Um, there's a couple more that I couldn't fit on the screen. Two, two string tag is another common one. Um, these are uh, symbols are just static properties on the global symbol object that you can reference. And symbols have to be globally unique across your runtime. With this comes a new class called disposable stack. Disposable, now, disposable stack is a feature that uh, when you instantiate it, uh, it allows you to manage multiple resources at the same time. So it doesn't have to just be attached to an object. You can use this disposable stack in your code to do some kind of interesting things. Uh, using this example, you can see cleanup.defer. It is very much like Golang's defer, where you can do a bunch of stuff in that defer immediately after you uh, create the file or the handler or whatever resource that would eventually be closed. That way you can sort of co-locate those, those dependencies together and not have the like cleanup happen way lower in the code. There's also an async disposable um, object as well that I didn't describe in here, um, but it's for the async version of this. If you want to use using, if you want to use using today, uh, you need TypeScript 5.2, and you'll need to polyfill the browser for now because it hasn't been adopted into the standard yet. It's stage three, so there's still some ways to go. Um, but if you just want to use the using and using await syntax, a lot of what you need is just the symbols, so you can polyfill those symbols pretty easily. Um, for the most part. So you can just, those two lines of code would give you support, would be like the polyfill for basic support of the using declaration. You also need to specify some options in the TS config, um, in particular the target and esnext.disposable. That's it. Any questions? So it looks like one difference between like using and like in Python with with is like the with keyword in Python creates a new block in and of itself, whereas using in JavaScript is it cleans up at the end of a block but it doesn't create one. So what happens if I like within a function I don't want to clean up at the end of the function I just want like a block within it to like open a file and then close it immediately? Is there a clean way to do that? How do I create that block? Do I use like an iffy or something like that or? You have an answer. Okay. As far as I understand in JavaScript, you can just declare blocks. Like you can just put extra curlies wherever you want. So like you don't need a function, you can just put extra curlies and then do your using in that and then it will just clean it up at the end of the curlies. Yep. Yeah, so in the in the release they have a bunch of examples where they just create a block. But you could also put that thing in a function and have that be the cleanup. Um, if you wanted to like compose it, you could do that. Hey, so I had a couple of questions. Um, I'm not very familiar with JavaScript, so sorry if this is an obvious one. Uh, but in C Sharp, at least, when you're using using statements, um, you can use an, or an interface that defines a disposable function so that your class will just call the disposable when you exit the scope. Is there something similar where you can attach it to an actual class instead of a function? Uh, 
That's if that's the case with this, I, I just don't know much about Java. That is a, a good question. I mean, this is the example that they give where you can attach the dispose to an object. Class, maybe you can do that. I actually don't know. I'm assuming that they have a way to, to handle the class uh, version of that. Um, okay. And then uh, my other question was, uh, in cases where you're doing like a fire and forget within a block, does it correctly clean up the uh, resource after you exit it? once the fire and forget finishes, or is that something you'd still have to manage manually? So like if you're not awaiting a promise, for example? It should, theoretically, but I don't, I actually don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was a good question, yeah. I might be speaking a slightly like different language than everyone else, so just stop me if this is weird, but, um, so disposable is a type of thing that has a destructor, right, is kind of the idea. So is, um, if you don't use the using keyword, it just, doesn't call the destructor and otherwise it does? Is that kind of the? I believe, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering, and you might not have an answer, but why would you ever not use the using keyword with a disposable? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's you just, if you have a disposable, you use using. Yeah, a, yeah. I, I would imagine. I mean, that's the example that they give here. Um, Feels like the compiler could figure, or like, the parser could figure it that does out. open up it does open this all up to a bunch of weird quirks and you know foot guns as well um, like the one you described like what happens if you if you're trying to use the disposable stack but you don't use the using what is what happens I'm gonna guess but I think uh, usually like if you read the the TC 39 meeting notes if you're a total nerd I know Ian does uh, <laughs> I do as well if you read the notes, they talk quite a lot about not breaking the web and backwards compatibility. It has always been that way with JavaScript. You could find yourself in a situation where somebody, for whatever reason, did define this defer method in the past. And by putting the using behavior on by default for all things, you would create a breaking change because suddenly the code would have completely different behavior just because of being in a newer version. So this using key, uh, keyword gives you an opt-in mechanism so that uh, we don't break you know, GeoCities sites from y yonder. That's my guess. Or maybe you have like, like a connection pool that you're like using within an object and an add object has its own like cleanup and then maybe you want like these nested cleanups. So you wouldn't want to like, if you create it like in the constructor of the object, you wouldn't want it to like clean up when the constructor scope left. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, good, good thought. Another one would be if you wanted to make it long living, then you could make it so it destructs when you're destructing your class. So that way you could potentially hold it for a longer period of time and then dispose of it when you want to. Take care. What if you want to get the class to I don't, it's, it's weird. I think it's weird. <laughs> Oh. oh. But why can't you just put the symbol on the class? Implementation. 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 Implementation.